If I were a bird, I would fly in the sky and reach out for the cold moon using my bony fingers. If I were a bird, I would sit in a tree and gaze down on deserted parks. If I were a bird, I would soar over wrinkly azure waters and make the current even stronger. If I were a bird, I would fly in the sky and drink the raindrops that absorb to the ground. If I were a bird, I would eat the seeds that the massive red monster had planted. The tighter the curriculum has become, the tighter the time constraints seem to have become as well. When we look at them carefully, there is nothing really that says that we have to be restricted by those. And indeed, I think that's been one of the liberating things in our school, is freeing both staff and pupils the time to get underneath the learning. The children should be excited to come to school every day and want to learn. The children are always quiet when they first come in in the morning. While I'm doing the register, the children settle down to a quiet activity. Today it's handwriting. As I saw children making good progress and I saw children developing very independent skills, where I saw my colleagues having to work very hard at sort of keeping children's attention, providing differentiated activities. The types of things I was doing with the children, the children were self-motivated and very independent, and I saw that as a real plus, and I wanted to extend that even further. Good morning, Joshua. Good morning, Jess. At first it was a bit weird. The timetable, well there wasn't really one at all except assemblies in the morning, um, which I was used to. And then after that, up to dinner time, it's yours, and after dinner time it's yours. We choose when the children go out to play, so if they're halfway through something and they're really engrossed, they don't hear the bell, so they don't slam the pencils down and run out, which a lot of children do. They just carry on working, if they're working well we'll let, let them work till they come to a natural conclusion. I've done it. If they're in the middle of a piece of work and they're finding it tough and it's hard on them and it's new, if we feel they need a break, they go out for a break. Good try. Mm. <laughs> if you've finished, lack of bells is nice, so we don't hear any bells at all. I just think they have more of a flowing day, really. They don't have to stop at any particular time. The activities are all about the frog prints, because our theme this term is Once Upon a Time, so we're looking at all traditional tales. We've got a table writing about the order of the story, what happened, the main events. Finally, we need to do the first limit first. We've got a table drawing the main events of the story, the six main points which we discussed earlier. And we've got one table with our artist, Mrs Forrest. She's making frog masks with them to get the creative element in. And Mrs Brooks is doing some speaking and listening and she's making a class play of the frog prince, so we'll see how that turns out. What does the princess do? Cry your eyes You down. cry, you've got to cry. <laughs> oh, she's not happy. Once each group has finished, they move around the activities so that they all get a chance to do each of the different elements, different curricular areas. My aunt is a teacher and she just can't imagine how it works. She's desperate to look at my planning because she just can't imagine running her classroom like that. I couldn't until I got here, and I think it does work. Our local authority were aware of what we were doing in our school, and they, they felt that we were in a strong enough position to be able to carry this forward, so that they did allow us, or let us, get on with it, because they knew we were forming quite a successful curriculum here. And the fact that our school runs on a no timetable way of working, the, the literacy hour didn't sit terribly comfortably with that, so we collectively decided that we, we weren't going to do it. It used to be a routine thing. They used to do the same thing year after year after year. And so there was nothing really exciting about coming to school. But now there is. Some of the governors actually come into school. We've got two or three governors coming into school. And so they actually know what's happening with the school. And they know that it's a good thing to move forward. They know that this curriculum's good. We do do better in the SATs. And we've always been striving to see if we can get um, outstanding for Ofsted. And the outstanding for Ofsted was the icing on the cake. 
If I was a bird, I would chase the clouds as they float away. If I was a bird, I'd glide through the stars and see the silvery moon. If I was a bird, I'd speed off the ocean as fast as a racing car on a track. If I was a bird, I'd taste a chunk of a cloud and imagine a marshmallow melting on my taste buds. I wish I was a bird. Um, we're making a bird um, that we took a picture of at Alathorpe Lakeland Park where we went to on our school visit because we're doing about forces and birds of prey. The activities this morning, there's always a certain amount of choice for the children. If they maybe want to start doing an activity uh, and they want to work through the morning and it continues to the afternoon, if they really do want to do that, they're encouraged to see something from beginning to completion. The children who are working on the art this morning, they need to see the finished results. So to stop them after an hour, I think it would be criminal. We're trying to get it done at before the end of the morning, but I'm not that sure if we will. <laughs> it was based on a science focus where we were looking at canoeing, kayaking and flying birds of prey. Oh. A group of children are working on stories to try and encourage them to look at enriching the language. Any words or phrases or anything that they particularly like, they can keep a record of this, like a, a treasury really, so they can use them then in their own stories. Just keep with the bird idea. Keep with the bird idea. And then what a bird. That's Another group of children who are working here with the periscopes, they, uh, they had to imagine when we went to fly the birds of prey, if we wanted to observe them a little bit more closely, the ideal situation would be that we can see them but they can't see us. Can you see me? No. Yeah, yeah. 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 can you see her? Look, if you angle no. it. So where um, am I looking? You look through there but you still have got to angle it a bit. Another group of children are working on how the eye actually works. They're looking at how day and night are formed and how the earth rotates on its axis but I'm wanting them to incorporate ICT with that as well as the speaking and listening. All the time the groups are organised and strictly organised to utilise my time, their time, the resources and the space within the classroom. We know exactly what we have to cover it is down in the schemes. The children know, we share the planning with them. We also have a tracking system through the school, these I can do statements, so the children know exactly where they are and they also know what the next step is. So there's always that element of challenge for them. And because they are so motivated and they are very independent and they do think creatively, they do like that little element of challenge that they know what they can do to improve the work just that little bit more. And also over the road, look, there's some trees. Do you want to write some trees on your map? Can you find where we are? Opposite the post office. We've set our children up to be very confident children who can cope with an ever-changing world so that they are able to cope when they move on to the secondary school. Our colleagues tell us extremely well. thinking who are the innovators in education and it's fascinating to find one on our own doorstep Janet here at Hook and the curriculum that her team are, have put in place is one that I think we can learn from um, as we look around to find examples of good practice at the secondary phase is there something we can learn from the primary phase this topic based approach this curriculum that doesn't seem to have a timetable I do know the students from Hook, I do know them individually and they've all come and they've all done very well at our school. Some of these individuals stand out as being particularly good at, at problem solving, at contributing to the life of the school and it, it's not just in curriculum time, it's outside in, in sporting events, it's by being the students who will stand up and take responsibility. <laughs> I only have the, the younger girl at this school. Um, I had a, a, an elder girl who was now 12 who left school two years ago. She will always remember her experience at H Hook School. Um, I think Hook School gave her a, gr a very good grounding. She left as a very independent, confident and responsible young citizen. And I think that's a very important factor that the school teaches the children. Partnership, sportsmanship and also teaching them to respect others and respect themselves. 
they have um, lots of practical tasks, lots of um, different experiences, um, yet the curriculum is, is delivered to them you know, appropriately and they learn from it. I think learn more. We have a very stable staff here. Um, no teacher has ever left the school, apart from last year when one teacher naturally reached retirement age. Um, all we've ever done is recruit new staff as the school has grown and they've all stayed with us because I think there is this wonderful atmosphere that we've created here. They can design one, can't yeah. they? That's a lovely idea, yeah. What well would you done. Make, would you make them? I just sent yeah, you we'll let the children design and make. Yeah. Well, Our planning is very rigorous. It has to be for the for the classrooms to flow as as calmly and as comfortably as they do. There has to be lots of rigour there. Where does light come from and how, how does it help us? I'm going to have my role play area as either a cave or a black hole. Ooh, Possibly. That nice. Lovely. Yeah. The only problem I've got with that but is I won't be able to see what they're doing. That's for the children, not for you, do you? Yeah, yeah I know. Get them glow in the dark <laughs> for the bars, yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking, glow in the dark, putting, hanging things inside it, halfway through, open it up so light's going in and then they can see what's been in it. Oh, I think that's, that's lovely. lovely. Yes. 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 Our planning really is based on our our own schemes of work that we produced a good number of years ago which are skills based schemes of work without those we couldn't operate they really are crucial to us and whereas this term I've looked at the leisure side of industry I want to look at uh, more business the more business side um, we're going to go to Drax Power Station. It uh, isn't a follow a format type of planning. It's not the same year after year after year. That It changes year on year to meet the needs of the children, to meet the needs of our local environment. Even the cohort gender balances. There are lots of issues around why we need to change our focuses and our topics each year. I've made some difficult decisions. Some people would say brave decisions. I've never really considered them brave, just the right thing to do. So the staff have given me a lot of respect, but likewise, I, I share that back with them. They're a marvelous team to work with. They put an awful lot of time and effort and energies into it. It isn't for the faint-hearted. She sails above the clear azure lakes, the other swan he awaits. Their soft as snow fluffy wings spread out to fly, up high, up high, into the sky. She plummets to the blue, blue waters, sails in the air to her daughters, who fly proud over the clouds, overlooking their land, neck in neck, hand in hand. <laughs>